Hello everyone. This is a recording about your first lesson in phonetics, entitled Syllables in English. So before we start, we need to have an overview about some previous terms. So first, what is a syllable? A syllable is a unit of speech. In English, each word consists of at least one syllable. As far as the syllable structure is concerned, a syllable may consist of three elements, one obligatory element and two optional elements. The obligatory element is called the peak or the nucleus, and it is composed or it consists of a vowel or a diphthong or a syllabic consonant. The two other optional elements are called the onset and the coda. And they both, both consist of consonants. And now we start our lesson. So, number one, consonant clusters in the onset. English has many consonant clusters, i.e. groups of two or three consonant sounds set together with no vowel in between. The maximum number of consonants in the onset of a syllable, that is, before the peak, in English is three consonants. In initial clusters of three consonants, the first consonant is the sound S. What does it mean? It means that when a word starts with a consonant cluster of three consonants, the first sound must be the S sound and we can't have any other sound. Drill 1, CC onset. It means two, two consonants in the onset. I'm going to read the words for you and I will give you a pause to repeat after me. So I read and you repeat the words after me. We start. Spot, stone, skate, sphere, smile, snow, slam, switch, plow, twist, Cream, pure, flame, shrink, view, thwart. Good. Now we move to drill to CCC onset, which means an onset composed of three consonants. As we have seen earlier, that when an onset has three consonants, the first sound is always a S sound. So I read and you repeat after me. I start. Splay. Spray. Spew, stray, stew, screw, squash, skew. Good. Now we move to task one. Clusters with S in sentences. In this task... I'm going to read and you listen and practice describing these problems. As usual, I read and you repeat after me. I'm not going to read the whole sentence in one, at once, but I'm going to read part by part and I give you a pause to repeat after me. I start. Number one. I was stung on the wrist by a wasp. 
I screamed. Number two. I slipped down the steps and sprained my ankle. Three. We had a puncture and our spare wheel was flat. Four. I stretched up the shutter window and strained my, myself. Five. A thief snatched my bag in the street. Good. Now I'm going to read again the sentences, but without a pause. Number one. I was stung on the wrist by a wasp. I screamed. Number two. I slipped down the steps and strained my ankle. Three. We had a puncture and our spare wheel was flat. Four. I stretched up to shut the window and strained myself. Five. A thief snatched my bag in the street. Good. Now we move to task two. It's a quiz. So you have a question here. The question is, which English word or words beginning with S are defined like this? So I will read some definitions for you and you are going to guess what are these words. All the words must start with the sound S. I start. Number one. A place where children go to study. A place where children go to study. So, what is it? Yes, sure, it's school. School, so it starts with the letter S and the sound S. Number two. To slide over ice wearing a blade and a foot. Again, to slide over ice, wearing a blade and a foot. So, what is it? Yes, it's to skate. Skate. And it starts with S. Three. To slide over snow, wearing a long strip of metal and a foot. I repeat. To slide over snow wearing a long strip of metal and a foot. So, what is it? Yes, it's to ski. Ski. Number four. Frozen water vapour. Again, frozen water vapour. Yes, it's the snow. Snow. Number five. To rest unconscious with the eyes closed. Again, to rest unconscious with the eyes closed. Yes, of course, it's to sleep. To sleep. Number six. A thin, flat piece of, for example, bread. Again, a thin, Flat piece of, for example, bread. Yes, it's a slice of bread. Slice. Seven. A country located to the north of England. I repeat, a country located to the north of England. Yes, indeed, it's Scotland. Scotland. Good. Now we move to task three. It's a conversation. Listen and practice this short conversation containing F, Th, Sh consonant clusters. But before we start the conversation, 
I ask you a question. So, my question is, what are, what are the four British names stated in this conversation? What are the four British names stated in this conversation? So, in this conversation, four British names are mentioned. So, can you guess what are these names? Okay, so the first name is, yes, Shropshire, Shropshire. The second name is Shrimpton, Shrimpton. What is the third name? Yes, it's Fletcher, Fletcher. And finally, the fourth name is Thrush, Thrush. Good. So the four names are Shropshire, Shrimpton, Fletcher and Thrush. Good. Now, we do the same thing. I read the conversation and I pause to make you repeat after me. Okay? We start. Splendid cricket match. Who won? We did. Shropshire needed three runs to win. Shrimpton hit the ball. Fletcher tried to catch it. But it slipped through his fingers. Oh no! So Shrimpton got his three runs. I suppose. No! Thrush was just behind Fletcher. He flung himself forward. And he caught the ball? No, he picked it up and threw it. And Trimpton was out. What a thrilling ending! Good, now I'm going to read again the conversation without any pause. I start. Splendid cricket match. Who won? We did. Shropshire needed three runs to win. Shrimpton hit the ball. Fletcher tried to catch it. But it slipped through his fingers. Oh no, so Shrimpton got his three runs, I suppose. No, Thrush, Thrush was just behind Fletcher and he flung himself forward. And he caught the ball? No, he picked it up and threw it. And Trimpton was out. What a thrilling ending. Good. Now we move to number two, consonant clusters in the coda. Okay, so you follow with me. So the consonants which occur after the vowel or peak of the syllable constitute the coda. The maximum number of consonants in the coda in English is four, i.e. C, 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 when the words or the word ends in a suffix. Otherwise, without a suffix, the maximum size of the coda is three consonants, i.e. C, C, C. So, we start with drill one. Saying past tenses, ed suffix, it means regular past, with ed. So, you listen and you repeat after me. And then decide how the ed suffix is pronounced in each case, i.e. is it pronounced to or de. So, 
I read, you repeat after me and you write. What is the pronunciation of the final ed or the suffix ed? Is it t or de? So, we have two lines of verbs in the past tense. So, they are all regular verbs. I start. Line number one. Dragged. Escaped. Grabbed. Locked. Opened. Robbed. Rushed. Unlocked. Good. So I'm going to correct the first line. So in line one, in dragged, the ed is pronounced d. In escaped, the ed is pronounced t. In grabbed, the ed is pronounced d. In locked, the ed is pronounced t. In opened, the ed is pronounced d. In robbed, the ed is pronounced d. In rushed, the ed is pronounced t. And in unlocked, the ed is pronounced t. Good. We carry on with line two. I do the same thing. I read the verbs, you repeat after me, and you try to guess the pronunciation of the final ed. We start. Line two. Cracked. Dropped. Helped. Jumped. Smashed. Wiped. Knocked. Good. I correct the line too. So, in cracked, the ed is pronounced t. In dropped, the ed is pronounced t. In helped, the ed is pronounced t. In jumped, the ed is pronounced t as well. In smashed, the ed is t. In wiped, the ed is t again. And in knocked, the ed is pronounced t. So, all the ed endings in line 2, they are all pronounced t. Good. Now we move to a task, task 1. So, use the verbs that we have seen in drill 1 to fill the gaps in the stories below and then practice them. So, again, you are going to use verbs in line 1 and line 2 to fill in the gaps in the stories in page 2. So, I'm going to go to page 2 and here are the two stories or the two short passages. So, as I said earlier, you're going to use in the first passage or in the first story, you're going to fill the, ga the gaps with verbs from line 1. And in the second story or in the second passage, you are going to fill in the gaps with verbs from line 2 in page 1. Okay? So first, I'm going to read passage number 1 or the story number 1 without the, without the missing words. Okay? And try to guess the words and fill in the gaps from line 1 in page 1. Great, so, number one, three masked men, gap, the city bank yesterday, when the doors were, gap, they, gap, in, they, a gap, the manager, and, a gap, him in the strong room, they, Gap, the safe with his keys. Then they, a gap, the manager in. 
end gap with three thousand pounds. Good. Now we try to do the task. So we try to fill in the gaps with verbs from line one. So I correct the task. Number one. Three masked men. Yes, robbed. So three masked men robbed the city bank yesterday. When the doors were. Yes, opened. So when the doors were opened. Yes, they rushed in. Good. They rushed in. It means they hurried or moved rapidly inside. So, they rushed in. They, what? Yes, they grabbed the manager. And, what? Yes, and dragged him in the strong room. Full stop. They, yes, they unlocked, unlocked the safe with his keys, full stop. Then they, good, they locked the manager in and, of course, escaped with 30,000 pounds. Good. Now I'm going to read the whole passage corrected. One, three masked men robbed the, the city bank yesterday. When the doors were opened, they rushed in. They grabbed the manager and dragged him in the strong room. They unlocked the safe with his keys. Then they locked the manager in and escaped with 30,000 pounds. Good. We move to the second passage or the second story where you have to fill in the gaps uh, with verbs from line two in the previous uh, page. So I read first the passage without the missing words. When I gap at the door, he gap and gap three eggs on the floor. Of course, they gap I gap him as he gap up the mess. His glasses fell on the floor, the glass gap. Good. So, have you guessed the missing words? We correct together. Number two. When I, yes, when I knocked at the door, he jumped. Yes, he jumped. And what? And dropped, of course. Dropped three eggs on the floor. Of course, they... Yes, they cracked. Full stop. I... Yes, I helped him as he... What? Yes, as he wiped up the mess. He wiped up the mess. Full stop. His glasses fell on the floor. The glass. Yes, the glass smashed. Full stop. Good. Now I'm going to read the story or the passage with the corrected words. Two. When I knocked at the door, he jumped and dropped three eggs on the floor. Of course, they cracked. I helped him as he wiped up the mess. His glasses fell on the floor. The glass smashed. Okay, good. Now we have finished the first lesson. So we stop here. See you in the next lesson. Please feel free to comment or put any questions in the comments below. Thank you.